Welcome to Womenomics. I am Linda Pringle Evans, your host, and I am so excited you are here with us today. And believe me when I say this, we have a topic today for you ladies. We do. It is about how self-imposed stress impacts your emotional wellness, okay? And I have the perfect professional expert, one with authority, I must, must say, who is going to help us ladies. That's right, I'm including myself. She is going to help us today to talk about what is emotional wellness so that you know exactly what she's talking about and what are some of those self-imposed stressors that we bring upon ourselves, ladies? And you know, like I know, we do it too often because we're always putting our, ourselves on the back burner. Yeah, and we feel guilty when we take time for ourselves. It's like, oh, I'm gonna take a nap. Then you lie down to take a nap and then you think about, wait a minute, I need to be up doing this. I need to do that. But today, it stops. You know why? Because Dr. Michelle Boone Fortin is going to help us to realize how important our emotional wellness is. Because if we don't take care of that, our physical will be impacted as well. But before I bring Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton to you, I just want to thank my business, Pringle Business Consulting, for sponsoring us for today's show. You know, what Pringle does is help coaches, let me say this, women coaches, consultants, and service professionals to really differentiate themselves in the marketplace. We show you how to optimize your personal brand for peak performance, where you can turn your reputation into revenue, girlfriends. That's right. And it does work. We got a system to help you. So if you want to learn more about it, just visit PringleBusinessConsulting.com and book a strategy session. It's complimentary. You have nothing to lose. You'll be spending some time, one-on-one -on -one time with yours truly. Now, let's hop into this topic. Now, before... I bring our guest on. Let me share some information with you about Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton. She is an associate chair and tenured professor of human resources at St. Leo University. She enjoys integrating her 25 years of experience as a clinician and practitioner in the field listen ladies, in the field of mental health in her speaking engagements, workshops, and classrooms. She is an advocate for vulnerable populations and is actively engaged in efforts to empower and uplift those who, whose voices have not been heard and silenced not just been heard, but silence. Think about that, ladies. Due to oppression, limited to resources, mistreatment, and lack of education. You know, I really admire Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton. You know, she has a heart for people. Dr. Boone Thornton has been employed with residential, hospital, and community-based mental health facilities throughout Virginia and Alabama. Dr. Boone Thornton is registered in the Commonwealth of Virginia to practice as a qualified mental health professional with a specialization in children. Her focus has always been on helping children and their families function at optimum levels at home, in their communities and academically. Ladies, I could go on and on about this lady because there's just so much that she has done, what she is doing and the impact that she is currently making in the lives of not just women, but in families. You heard 
from her bio about how she feels about children. So let's get started, ladies. Welcome, Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton. How are you, my friend? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I always like to connect and especially connect with women. And I want to, to start off by just sharing a little bit about emotional wellness, because we throw that term around like everybody knows what it is. That's right. What it means is to like have a positive attitude and high self-esteem, a strong sense of self and the ability to recognize and share a wide range of feelings with others in a constructive way. Because stuff happens to us every day, all day. Some days start off good, some days start off bad. But it's the way we look at it and our outlook. And if we keep a positive outlook, we will maintain healthy emotions and uh, uh, emotional well being. You know, I appreciate you leading in with defining emotional wellness and how important it is. Because when you think about all the, how you described emotional wellness, it plays a role every, not sometimes, but every single day in our lives. And we have situations that occur and they impact us in certain ways that sometimes you hear people say, just like I said to you a moment ago, what my day has been like, you know, I had some things that happened that were totally not planned for today. And I'm one of those people. I like to plan, plan the day. This is what, this is where I start working. This is when I stop. These are the things that I should accomplish this day. I'm one of those regimented people, but today, hey, it didn't work like that at all. So it just yeah. kind of threw me off, kept her. It really did. But I had to regroup and I had to think about this, Dr. Michelle, our topic for today. I said, man, this is right on time because it's a, I have been impacted myself today about emotional wellness. So share with our ladies, what are self-imposed stress? Let's talk about some examples, especially that we as women. Absolutely. That's really important, Linda, because, you know, as we go through our day, like you say, there are stressors, you know, gas mm -hmm. prices, food prices, education, are the teachers prepared, are the students go back? We have all of these other stressors in addition to self-imposed stress. So self-imposed stress is something we bring on ourselves, not intentionally. Women are givers. Women are nurturers. Mm -hmm. So we care about what's going on. And sometimes we put ourselves in the middle of everything, meaning we put the weight on ourselves mm -hmm. for everything to run perfectly. We say yes when we need to be saying no because we want to help. Um, we try to make things fit, mm -hmm. even in our own businesses and even in our own lives. And we even try to fit in. But what we have to remember is we were uniquely made by God mm -hmm. to be one of a kind, meaning we're supposed to stand out. Mm -hmm. And so stop trying to make everything fit because it's not. You know, it, it is just one of those things that I, I tell people all the time, women try to support everybody. And that's good because I believe in collaboration. I believe that we're in a season of collaboration, mm -hmm. but everybody's not going to make the journey with you. No. So stop trying to bring them along. That's just a lot of undue stress. You know, Dr. Michelle, you said something about saying yes when you know it's no, which is true. And I think we as women are more guilty of that than men um, because We'll say yes, because we want to help, as you stated. And in a moment, we sit down and think about what we said yes to, we become overwhelmed. We get that feeling of being overwhelmed 
where am I going to get the time to take on this and, and provide excellence to what I just agreed Absolutely. to do? Absolutely. We are We are guilty of that. And I think most of us can say, I've done that. I have done that. But I will say this, Dr. Michelle, I think as one matures in life and you began speaking for myself and you began to look at your, your life, where you are right today and where you want to be, how you want to enjoy the time that you have what you want to do and serve and be a blessed, like you said a moment ago, a blessing based on who you are, the uniqueness that you have. Absolutely. I can say no and not feel bad anymore. And I think that's where we need more women to feel comfortable saying no and be able to explain why. Because if you just say no, a person will feel, well, she just doesn't care. But when you can provide an explanation why, and you don't have to give them all your business, simply <laughs> just say, I don't have the bandwidth right now. You know, I, I have so much going on. And perhaps if this was something presented six months or a year from now, maybe I could be of, of assistance, but right now is not a good time. And when I think about how we, especially us as mothers, we take on a lot of things with our kids too, yes, sometimes. Do. Yes, we, we do. do. When we should be saying no to them as well, because sometimes we become a crutch for our own children. We do, and we, we take on um, this whole role of helicopter mom. Helicopter yeah. parent, where you soup in and you uh -huh. save the day all the time. And when you do that, you don't let your children solve their own problems. You don't let them experience maybe some, some hurt, some pain, some losses, because that's real life. Yes. And so when you keep swooping in, that's what's expected. Mm -hmm. Every time I can remember a friend of mine saying, I've got to take my son to college. And I was like, oh, that sounds great. And I says, well, what time are you going to be back? Because I knew how long the trip was. She says, well, I got to set up his stuff and then we got to go to the store and we got to get this. And I said, doesn't he have a car? She says, yes. <laughs> and so she just kept talking and talking and talking. I'm thinking, okay. And so when she got home and I called her the next day to see how things went, she says, I've got to get off the line. He needs me to tell him how to wash clothes. So when you keep swooping in, you don't let people to develop who they are because God's given us all gifts. That's right. Okay. And as parents, we don't want our children to have to suffer, no, but no. they've got to grow. And they Dr. Grow. Michelle, yes. going back to your friend when her son called and asked how to wash, do, do his laundry. Yes. He had not been prepared. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what I want our list, our viewers to understand. We have to prepare for everything, basically everything that we do, we must prepare. And sometimes saying, you have to learn this because I'm not always going to be here. Absolutely. Nobody else is going to do it for you like I do it. So I think those self-imposed stressors they are so profound in our lives. And I'll, I'll even bring up another one. And I want you to really expound upon it. Is we bring on debt that we should not sometimes. We go out and we'll say, you know what? I deserve this. I have been going through X, Y, Z, and I deserve to treat myself, right? Right, absolutely. But that the bank account says say yeah. something differently. <laughs> I know, I know. And it is, it is brought on by a lot of things. It's brought on by social media. So you look at everything that's going on and everybody has just this perfect lifestyle and they have all these wonderful, beautiful things. And you feel like yes. I have worked so hard 
day in, day out. And I should have that too. So yes. when I get to this you know, level, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy this and this. And you may not be able to afford that. And even the people on social media might not be able to afford that. Don't but know. you're just looking at the image. That's right. And so we all try to, again, fit within the images that we think might be our competition or the, what we're comparing ourselves to. It's very dangerous co to compare yourself. It really mm -hmm. is because again, like I said, we are uniquely made. So yes. it's difficult for me to compare myself with you. I mean, you may have some attributes that I love and I can work toward um, building within myself, but it's still uniquely me. That's right. And I think for us, especially with social media, we are exposed to everything today. It's not like it was when I was growing up. You know, you were taught by family, the community, church, school, but now people are influenced by the world. Absolutely. Yes. And I think it takes a person to really understand who they are. I think when you can tap into your uniqueness, as you mentioned, and you can love yourself. When you can love yourself, and I'm not saying it in where you're, it's all about you and nobody else. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is this, when you can love yourself and be grateful and appreciate who you are. So when you look at someone else, you can appreciate them for the qualities they possess, like Dr. Michelle was stating, but it doesn't mean you, you must conform to being someone that you aren't. Because when you don't allow yourself to fully embrace you, then you're never going to acquire all what has been promised for your life. Absolutely, absolutely. You yeah. can't walk in my journey. That's right. You can't you have to walk your own journey because yes. you have gifts that I don't have. And as long as you're chasing my gifts, you'll never be able to enjoy your gifts. That's right. Absolutely. So it's really important that we take that time to not only figure out who we are or think about some of the things that are stressful to us. And some of, yes. again, that stress that we put on ourselves, that's mm -hmm. a lot of stress. It to is try to live up to somebody else's image. Yes. And not only that, to try to live up to somebody else's image of you. Now, one thing parents do, and I'm a parent, so I'm guilty, is you know, when you have your children, you kind of get in your mind what you like for them to be. Yes. I want to be an engineer, I want to be a doctor, and I want them to be, and so I start guiding him and changing his trajectory. But that might not be what God has him here to do. That's so right. when you do that to others and let others do it to you, it's difficult for you to really be happy and satisfied. And it's almost like this constant struggle. And even when you achieve things, you don't have that happiness because you still have that emotional baggage that you're carrying because this is not your purpose. This is not your gift. And this is not your journey. You know, you, that what you just said about, and I wrote it down, and I love this. Living, but you didn't use this word, but this is what you said, living vicariously through someone else. And as mothers, we even fathers. We, we do, we are guilty of that a lot of times, but I think it's because we want not just the best, we want the very best for our, our own children. But then we find ourselves, because we are trying to guide them in the direction we are choosing their pathway to be, we are, we are bringing forth more self-imposed stressors upon us <clears throat> because now not only are we feeling 
this kid isn't getting it. Well, our child is looking at us thinking, this isn't something I'm interested in at all. I've never said this. Why do I have to try to live up and be and do everything that mom and dad want me to do? We don't allow them to fully expand the way they have been created to be. So, I mean, there's just so many stressors that we do. We, we place stresses upon ourselves even when we dress sometimes, when, we, when we're choosing outfits to wear. We'll, ch we'll change three or four times before we leave out the door because we keep, we put on an outfit and we go, mm, no, uh, that doesn't look right. Uh, uh No, what girlfriend, call your girlfriend, girl, what are you planning on wearing? And then she'll tell you, then you'll decide, okay, let me go and change and put on something else. We don't think about those changes in our lives. Something so simple becomes almost like a nuisance for us. It actually does. It's, it's so much weight. If you think about all of the things that go on and you actually like sit them on your shoulder, you wouldn't be able to walk. You wouldn't be able to move. Uh, one of the things that I have found, especially when I'm working with families and I work with the children, they may have some emotional behavioral disorders and then pull the parent aside. And the parent is expending so much stress trying to be strong through this whole thing. I'm like, you're not a mental health professional. What do you mean be strong? You just yeah. be mom. Don't right. worry about taking on other people's roles. And we do that all the time. As single moms, we try to take on roles as, as the father, as, as, you know, whatever. We try to take on other roles. And what I really want people to do is just to stay in your lane. It's a lot of resources out here. And it's, it's more difficult to do than actually the way I said it, because we are just so easily, you know, that's just a natural fit for us. We want everything to work. We want peace, yes, we want yes, happiness, yes, yes, and we yes. want everything to work. So we'll go over there and do what somebody else is supposed to do just to keep the peace, just to make it work. But you have got to stay in your lane and just do you. Don't take on anybody else's roles. You know, don't worry about the teacher at schools. Not, and I understand education is important, but if the teacher knows that she could sit in the work home and you're going to teach your child everything and just send her back to school, then the teacher doesn't have to teach. Let right. everybody do their role, do their assigned roles. That yes. will take so much stress off of you. It really will. It will. Yes. I know we're getting close to, I hate this. <laughs> Because we could go on and on and on. But you said this about us as women want feeling we must be strong. Now, there are certain ethnic groups where females are taught to be strong. Okay. Cultural. Mm -hmm. Cultural. Mm -hmm. Taught to be strong. But I think sometimes we may have taken what was stated out of context. So, and I think because some of us feel that we must be, and now when I say strong, it's like, I must be strong. I, mu I'm not, I am not one who cry like a crybaby. I can deal with it. I can do this. I'm capable of this. And when she needs help because she feels that she must be strong, she won't ask for help. And eventually, there is a breakdown. There's a breakdown. There's a breakdown and there's a brokenness. Yeah. Because hurt people hurt people. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And so yes. if you are carrying all the hurt, eventually, you're going to start to hurt others. Not right. on purpose, but because you can only do so much. You can only carry so much. And you're right. right it's culturally um, and we've got to get away from that. And we've got to remove the mask that we've been having on 24 seven to cover all of those emotions. Yes. And deal with it. Absolutely. Yes. So I know there are ladies out there 
And a lot of this information that we are discussing is resonating so well with you. So I want Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton to share with you how to contact her because she is available to help you. That's why she's here. This is why I brought her on the show. Because as I always say, ladies, I bring you the best. Oh, yes, I do. I believe in that because I want you to be at your A game. I want you to enjoy your life. And in order to do that, we must help one another. So Dr. Michelle, please share how if someone would like to connect with you, what is the best method of connecting with you? The best method is to actually go to my website. It's all lowercase, all together, drmichelleboonthornton.com. And you can go there, you can see about some of, some of the work that I do individually and as a group. Um, I use my workbook faithfully. I, even when I went to Africa just recently, used my workbook, didn't have any translation problems, everything worked well. So just contact me and there should be a place where it says contact Dr. Michelle Boonthorne. Put your information in there and I will follow up with you. And please share with our viewers about your workbook and if they would like to purchase your workbook. Absolutely. The workbook is called Transforming Your Realities, Removing the Mask, and it is available on Amazon.com. Um, and I always encourage people, start with the workbook because you need to address some of your own issues and everybody's issues are different. Um, and you can just use this and, and start writing. I also have a companion journal for more intimate things because as you start to peel back some of the emotions, there may be some intimate, emotional, really hurtful things that you want to put in a journal, just like we've been journaling all our lives. So you can get the book, Transforming Your Realities, Removing the Mask at Amazon.com. Wonderful. If there was a message that you would like to share with our audience that could move the needle right now in her life, what would that one piece of advice be today for her? That emotional wellness, as I described in the beginning, that transformation begins with you. Nobody can do that for you, but you. And we all need to transform. Oh, Dr. Michelle, thank you so very much. I told you this was going to be a good one. I knew it would be. And what I would like to end with today is simply this. You only have one life to live, one life to give. So go out and create your power because you've been given power. So it's time to unleash it and make a difference in this world because you have been chosen. You have. So step into it and own it. Until next time, and thank you so much, Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton. Thank you for having me.